Yeah. Oops, I got to pay attention. Live. Hey, we're live. Today we have five authors. So hello, everybody out there. Thanks for coming on. We have Mike Gartell. Where are you, Mike? I'm in actually beautiful Covington, Louisiana, near New Orleans, near New Orleans. And we have Mike Shoulders. Where are you, Mike? Take the last train to Clarksville and I'll meet you at the station, Tennessee. Oh, you gotta write, write a song like that. Yeah, and we it's have like Steve song. Swinburne. Stevie Swinburne, where are you? I'm in Southern Vermont. I'm in a place called South London area of Vermont where we're called the Golden Triangle. You got Stratton Mountain Ski Resort, Bromley Mountain and Magic Mountain. So I'm happy to be here. By the way, I'm very jealous of your shirt. So to fight off your shirt, I wore a tiger tie today. Okay. <laughs> and then we have a special guest today. He wasn't with us last week, but by popular demand of all the fans, we have Sneed Collard. Hey. <laughs> Sneed, tell us where you are. I'm in Missoula, Montana, which used to be called the Paris of the 90s, but or Paris of the West, but I don't think we have achieved that status anymore. Well, this is great. So uh, this is our Friday show. And for our Friday show, we thought we would, uh, by the way, hello to all you teachers. Thanks for watching. We feel for you. All five of us had a big spring lined up to visit a lot of schools and all our schools were canceled, but we decided not to cry about it. We decided to have a nice show. And today we were gonna talk about interesting facts we learned while writing our books. Jerry, can Sneed, I just stop, I have to stop you? Stop you right there because if you hold your head right there, you've got horns coming. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. are a forest creature. Right. That's Remember that's the right. water buffalo club on Fred Flintstone? Yeah. <laughs> not, not a forest creature. I think I'm in the water buffalo club. You know? <laughs> oh Actually, God. behind me, behind me, uh, on this side, whoa. On this side over here, this is a black buck. This is a blesbok. This is a bison above my head. Whoop, where'd it go? That's a yeah. bison. Uh, who wants to guess this one? I'll give Edith you a clue. I'll give you a clue. Chevrolet. Impala. Impala. What? Uh, what skull is that one right there? Impala. Impala is correct. And this one right here? Gazelle. Probably Nova. the origin of a of the myth of the unicorn. He has straight horns. Ibex. What is that? Hey, does he make like electricity go between those things in the last one? It look <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. You write a skull alphabet book. And so did you, Mike Cartel. You wrote a skull alphabet book. Well, not an alphabet book, but a skull no, book. Yeah. Skull book. I'm sorry, a skull. You wrote but a I skull didn't, book. I didn't even know you had done one. I I uh, it just goes to We're show. We're gonna you. have a lie detector test later. Uh, <laughs> now, your skull book is way better than mine. Go ahead. Well, I had Ralph Massiello draw on the pictures. He was great. Um, yeah. That's a gems bock or an oryx. Gems bock or an oryx. There you go. Pretty cool. Where are you, Today, Jerry? What's that? Where are you? I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Only I'm in South Boston. They call it Southie. Southie. Yes. Southie. They have a great song. Southie is my hometown. But traditionally, Southie was Irish. My family was from, was Italian descent, and they were from Eastie. So my oh. grandfather grew up when he came off the ship in East Boston. So Eastie was all Italian traditionally, and South, South Boston was all Irish. So my grandfather, I don't know if he likes me living here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's there fun. you go. So we thought today we might do a theme and talk about uh, things we learned while working on our books. So uh, we were going to think of interesting facts we learned. And today we thought we would concentrate on forests. That might be one reason I brought Sneed along. Sneed wrote an incredible book called Firebirds about birds that go into uh, a forest fire area the day or the week after the fire, all these birds that go in. You guys, you got to check this book out. This is really a beautiful book. Steve Collard wrote it. But my first fact of the day for kids out there is this. You know how they say uh, the lion is the king of the jungle? 
Well, he's not. He doesn't live in the jungle. He lives in savannas. And savannas are plains with grass. Is that right, Mike Artel? A it savanna is. is a plain with grass. So, but who does live is the tiger lives in the forest. Oh, so that's my first fact. Oh. The tiger lives in the forest. He does not live in the... So he is probably king of the jungle. You know, he lives in the rainforest or the, you know, temperate forest like in Siberia. Wow. So he's a forest creature. So there you go, kids. That's my fact for the day. I, I went first because I was moderator. I was bossy, you know? <laughs> it's your job. Hey, Jerry, Jerry, did you know that tigers wear Jerry Pilata ties? Did you know that? What's that? <laughs> So I think Mike Cartel, my fellow bald guy, should go next. Yep. So okay. Cal. Glad to do it. This will be brief. Uh, I, I, I wanted to show you Louisiana. something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a book. Now, a jungle is a kind of a forest. Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a jungle. This is a book I did called The Really Weird Jungle. Ah. And, uh, this book is about all these uh, really weird creatures in the jungle. These are all imaginary. Um, and a uh, couple of things I wanted to show you about this. Um, I want to compare them. This is a page I did for adults because anybody who's ever worked in an office, uh, this talks about different kinds of creatures and their characteristics. But I did this one for anybody who's ever worked in an office. It says, Humdrums don't really have too much to do, but they do it so hard that they're glad when they're through. <laughs> um, That's great. And um, the, the money page is here. Uh, talks about all the, all the different creatures and all. It says, uh, but there is one thing that all of them share, and it's not how they sound, and it's not what they wear. All the weird creatures, whatever their name, no, deep down inside, they're really the same. Oh, they have a heart. Yes, Excellent. that was the message of the book. Um, but I wanted to show you this because um, this book actually was published in the early 90s. Geez, when all of our listeners were up playing with the angels still. And um, this, this was the original illustration. These are the original illustrations for the book that I did. Ah. Okay, and I just wanted to show you uh, about a year and a half ago, I took these illustrations, had them scanned in, and then I went and digitally uh, changed each one and enhanced it. So I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. This is the same page. So that wow. was that page, and that's that page. So wow. uh, I is actually that did book, this. Is that book still in print, Mike? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, My, uh, early nineties, yeah. early nineties. That's before Apple computers before, uh, I would bet that's before, um, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. 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 This was all, I did this all in colored pencil and watercolors. And, um, and, and here's, here's something that, uh, the kids, if there are kids who are interested in, in uh, drawing and they feel like, ah, I don't draw very well. Or not, I just want you to know kids. Uh, I am colorblind, uh, not not totally colorblind, but very color weak, especially in the red green area. So um, I really have to have my wife take a look at what I do uh, and, and when I'm in the process of doing it. And um, I just remember one time I was I was uh, drawing a, a, a lion and uh, I thought I had done a pretty good job and you know, colored it and all that. And my younger daughter came by and said, that is a very cool lion. She said, why is it green? And I said, that's green? And she said, yeah, that's green. <laughs> so uh, sometimes uh, you just, uh, I actually, when now, I- Were you colorblind in second grade? Were you colorblind in fourth grade? Were you colorblind in eighth grade? Yeah, so yeah. all along. Yep, yep. All and right. you know, what I do now, but you learn tricks, you learn tricks. So like, if I look at a color wheel or a color bar now, I know what part of the color wheel or the color bar brown is in and what part purple is in. So I know if I'm gonna color a face, I'll go to the brown part and decide yeah. what shade. Um, and so, you know, you learn some little tricks like that. But um, anyway, the, the whole idea behind the Really Weird Jungle is that, uh, you know, life's a jungle out there and we're all very different, but deep down inside, we're really the same. So that was a message.
Okay, next up is Steve Swinburne from the great state of Vermont. Well, I wrote a book called The Wood Scientist. Yay! Which, which unfortunately is no longer in print, but uh, let's bring that. Yeah, thank you. Let's let's hear it. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen right here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because there's something that's happening right now um, in Vermont and around the country that's pretty cool. I hope you can see this. Um, I'm going to start this off and just listen to it before I say anything about it. Here we go. Can you all hear that? Yeah. What, what this is is a vernal pool, V-E-R-N-A-L. They're small temporary pools that appear in the woods this time of year. And in Vermont, they're all over the place. And you have a lot of amphibians coming down to these little watery puddles like frogs, wood frogs. Right now, what we're hearing and seeing here are wood frogs. They'll go in there and the males and the females do their thing. Big, they'll, have, they'll have these big egg, egg masses and salamanders will get in there, uh, spotted salamanders. I go on my walks every day around here and, I, and I'll go into the woods and I'll see these little vernal pools. And um, they're kind of all, they're kind of neat. If you get a chance to get into the woods and you see a watery puddle, spend some time there. You're going to start seeing some egg masses. And um, these are all wood frogs. Uh, peepers, spring peepers are starting to call right now. And they're not going to last very long. These, these pools are all of maybe two, three, four weeks, if that, and they'll dry up. But um, all the tadpoles would have uh, turned into frogs and they'll, they'll spend the rest of the of their year in the woods, burrow down into leaves. So I just wanted to throw a little word out there about vernal pools. They're, they're pretty cool. Did you great say word, great spring. vocabulary. Did you say those were spring peepers, Steve? Those were wood frogs that we oh. heard, um, mm -hmm. but spring peepers will be, will be coming up next. Oh. Awesome. Okay, Steve Collins, Spring Peeper is coming up next. Yes, love it, love it. Hey, well, uh, I like forests a lot and have written quite a few books about them. I tend to, uh, Jerry mentioned my book, Firebirds, which is about our forest here in Montana, but I've, I really love especially tropical forests. In fact, one of my first books that caught people's attention was about a tropical cloud forest down in Costa Rica. But today I actually want to talk about something else, and that is uh, kinds of animals that live in the cloud, I mean, not the cloud forest, but in Southeast Asian forests. And these are gliding animals. And gliding animals are just really amazing animals. They wow. don't fly but they have evolved to glide very efficiently between trees. And we have uh, flying squirrels, of course, but actually North and South America are pretty poor as far as the gliding animals go, but that's not true of all of Southeast Asia. And one of the big questions, oh, wait, let's see. Let's just share the screen here. One of the big questions here is, uh, what, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. one of the big questions is why Southeast Asia has so many gliding animals and we don't, because there may be hundreds of them there in Southeast Asia, whereas uh, maybe only a few on the other continents. Um, do you guys recognize this lizard here, anybody? It's doing push-ups. He's doing push-ups, yes. Is he trying to sell us insurance? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he tried to break into that game, but it was already taken. So, no, I, I'm sure you guys know by reading down here, this is a Draco lizard, and there are quite a few different kinds there. And a Draco, huh? Wow. A Draco. These guys not only can glide a straight line, they are so good at gliding that they can actually circle trees 
and perform all kinds of acrobatics while they are gliding. And so it's a very cool thing. But the thing that blows me away the most uh, is this guy here, which is a gliding snake. And I'm gonna hold up the picture because I didn't have that online. But look at these snakes. They launch from trees and spread out their bodies and they actually swim through the air. And they can also turn on a dime and go up to, oh, several hundred feet, depending oh on how gosh, far really? from. And so wow. th this is just mind blowing to me. And there are about five, at least five known species of these snakes, but there are probably a lot more. Uh, and, Smith, I, just, I just have to wonder, which snake was the first one to be up in a tree and go, you know, I think I can fly. I'm going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this, guys. Watch this. <laughs> he flattens his body out. Is that correct, Snead? He flattens Yeah. In body. fact, if you can see it, and it, it's not even flat, it kind of forms a, 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 an airfoil, actually, uh, just like an airplane. So it's kind oh. of concave underneath and rounded on top. And so, it's generating lift. And also the angle of attack um, gives it lift as well. Wow. <coughs> as if snakes were scary enough, now you have to look up as well as down. <laughs> uh, uh, my my daughter, who is terrified of snakes, would probably have a heart attack knowing <laughs> that she, she not only has to look down, she's got to make <laughs> <up> the <laughs> air. She couldn't handle it. Wow. What's really scary is that Mike Shoulders has to follow Sneed. That's what's really <laughs> scary. <laughs> well, the, f the first thing I want to share today is I have, a, uh, I have three books in the State Series. Sneed, do you know about the State Series from Sleeping Bear Press? Yes, I, I actually wrote the, the Montana version of that. <laughs> you need to play along a little bit better than that. <laughs> no, I've never heard of it. Tell, tell me, Mike. Um, I, I never heard of it. It looks really Sneed, great. I never, Sneed, I never knew you wrote the Montana one. I did. Yeah. <laughs> they were desperate. <laughs> is well, that it? Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. There it is. Uh, uh, Mike Shoulders, you've written about 400 of these, haven't you? Just <laughs> three. <laughs> one for every state. Yeah. Yes, there's one for every state, and uh, Sneed did the Montana book. I knew that up front, uh, Sneed. <laughs> Forgive Sneed, me. I knew that up front. So anyway, uh, Arkansas is called the natural state. For 200 points, who can name the nickname of Arkansas before it was the natural state? Uh, the Diamond State. Razorback State. Land of? Milk and Honey. The falling sun. Okay, Arkansas for a long time was called the land of opportunity. And uh, in the early 90s, they changed their name to the natural state. And so since we're talking about forests, I thought I would share a page from this book illustrated by a great illustrator and friend, Rick Anderson. Rick lives in uh, Mississippi. And this is the, the timber page, T is for timber. Oh. And it 17 million acres of timber in Arkansas. About half the state is timber. And I've got a light over here showing, so I'm sorry. Can, you, but, can uh, you get closer, Mike? Yep. Closer? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so it's just, it's just a, a, a natural shot of, of the state, of, of a creek there. But, but what I want you to know is um, the pine tree, uh, I've got this written down, the pine tree is official state tree. And the official state flower is also from a tree, the apple blossom. Oh, and so the cool. flower is from a tree as is their official tree. So, huh. so an interesting fact, uh, na the natural state, Arkansas, the natural state. By the way, I, that's Rick Anderson paddling the boat. <laughs> uh, and so uh that that's my uh fact my first fact for the day arkansas hey, hey mike mike a yeah. quick question uh in tennessee have they run out of razors because we have a supply in vermont i can send you some 
We are totally out. There's a run on them. Mike, do they have electricity in Tennessee? Because I could lend you my electric razor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike, what's interesting, you don't think of Arkansas as being a timber state. At least I don't. Does anybody? Oh, yeah. yeah. My, my, my uh, the second job out of college was for Georgia. Well, I worked for Georgia Pacific. And uh, they have huge mills uh, across it. I believe it is Arkansas. Southern Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, Northern Southern North, Arkansas, North, Southern North, 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 North. Huge. An awful lot of two by fours come from that part of the country. Yeah. What shocked me the most has nothing to do with forest, but I'm going to share it since we're saying what shocked us. Do you know they're the number one producer of rice? No. Wow. Arkansas? Arkansas? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was the number one rice and the number one shrimp, isn't it? Not no, shrimp. Shrimp, shrimp's Louisiana. But but uh, Arkansas well, is right. I'm talking uh, about natural shrimp. I'm talking about farm shrimp. Oh, I don't know about that, Jerry. Catfish, maybe. I know Mississippi's big on catfish, but uh, no, that plain, right? I mean, the uh, you have the bluff side of the river, Mississippi River, and then you have the, the the flat side, the wash, and that's where all the, the rice paddies are, right? Yeah, yeah. huge. It's huge. Uh, Very you know, interesting. My, quick quick question. Team. So um, is Arkansas also known for diamonds? Because uh, their state quarter, I think, has a diamond on it. It is the only state where you can go and dig diamonds. And Sneed, that is why their state flag has a shape of the diamond in it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro, Arkansas. I never knew that. I never knew the diamond thing. Yes. Wow. Yeah. They're, they find people, them. People actually really do find them too. Steel. They really do. Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys. I know because my grandson is crazy about rocks and he's he's bugging me to take him to Arkansas to do that. Yeah. Oh. Hey guys. Uh, Mike, bring him to Boston to, to situate Massachusetts where I go. Yeah. And uh, there's a beach with perfectly round rocks. Oh, really? You got to really? see it. Oh, they also have great uh, seaweed. <laughs> they have great seaweed. Hey, here's I my saw next you up your face to seaweed, Steve. Yeah. Class, <laughs> class. My next forest fact. I wrote a vegetable book, and all I can say is this: If you want to have a writing career, you should probably not start with the vegetable book. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, have the rest of you found this? I find every time I write a book about plants, it like sells six copies, maybe. Yeah. 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 I don't write about plants. I it write about animals. Part. It's like I'm, animals I'm, more. This it's one's like seven animals. My more, yeah. more. But you know, you had <laughs> yeah. little, Jerry was talking about uh, the, the, the open spaces before. I know a lot of times teachers say, I can't find an, a rock book or I can't find a vegetable book. And you're not going to sell a ton of them, but it does fill a need. Yeah, uh, for curriculum. Yeah. curriculum for sure. Um, <laughs> so here's my fact. Are you ready? By the way, guys, when, I, when people say to me, when you're writing alphabet books, what's your toughest letter? But here's a good one for you guys. Ready? Name me a D vegetable. A D vegetable? A, a kid a, told me Doritos. Diacon, radish. You're right, I did use Diacon. It took me like two years to find it. You're right. <laughs> what is it? You should have asked Steve. There it is, what a is Daikon it? radish. Right there. Uh, what, Daikon? Yeah, 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 my okay, wife, yeah. they're big white radishes. My wife loves them in the salad. They're yeah. very kind they're of hot. Uh, when you bite them, they bite back. But yeah. here's my fact, so I don't want to hog all the time. There's a fiddlehead. I think in the springtime in the Northeast, you go out in the uh, forests. Yeah. And yeah. in a oh, fern. A fern. A fern. Yeah, I've seen that. Out of the ground. Before it opens up. Right, because when it opens up, it's bitter, and nobody yeah. likes to eat them. But when they're oh, just popping out, when they're just popping out, they're like spinach. Yeah. So a lot of people eat fiddleheads. And you can even find them in the supermarket. They're canned. But there you go. A Delicious with butter, forest. garlic, onion, and wine. A fiddlehead. And you, and you throw away the, the butter, garlic, onion, and the fiddlehead and just drink the wine, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike Cartel, your, your turn. All right. I'm going to keep order here. You guys are misbehaving. I'm going to go to the principal's office. 
<laughs> That's what happens when you put five boys together. We're um, I'm gonna um, now for something completely different. Okay. Um, Who said that, by the way? Uh, Monty Python. Um, this is from a book I did called "Laugh Your Head Off." These are all jokes. And we're going to do what I call the he he rhyme three. Okay, so here's how this works and see how y'all do with this. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you call a place to keep money? What pirates make you walk? And what a dentist does when she pulls your tooth? The answers rhyme. A place, to, a place to keep money. Bank. What, what pirates make you walk? Bank. 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 And what a dentist does when she pulls your tooth. Yank. Yank. <laughs> Bank, plank, and yank. Okay. So here are the forest ones. Okay. What do you call a shape with four equal sides, an animal that hibernates, and the stuff on top of your head? Box. Square, bear, and hair. That's right. Except for the hair part, Jerry. Thank you. That was my question. <laughs> All right. A purple fruit, an animal that eats bananas, and sticky stuff that you tear off of a roll. Grape, ape, and tape. Yeah, very good, Snee. <laughs> no, no, I never got, I didn't get that one. Okay, now um, here's a riddle. Why do bears get so many splinters? Because mm. mm. they walk around. Bear the woods. Barefoot, thank you very much. <laughs> wow, all right, uh, let's see. And one more of these. Um, what do you get if you cross a beaver with a termite? You get an animal that chops down a tree and then eats the whole thing. And I wanna tell you, don't forget to tip your waitress. Thank I'll you I'll be here much. all week. Hold I'll up the book all. cover again, Mike. Hold up the book cover. Yeah, hold up the book cover. Yeah. Laugh Your Head Off by Sterling Publishing. Nice, nice. Great jokes and giggles. <laughs> Very good. All right. All right, guys. I have to be honest. I never imagined there would be jokes today. You guys <laughs> yeah. just never. We should do a joke <laughs> show. Jerry, let's do a joke show. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> hey, Mike, are you going to show that video? Oh, you want to see this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to see the video. Okay, for all the hey, people kids watching, out there, hey, you teachers out there, Mike is going to show you what to do when you're video. camping, and you have yeah, to go on a Zoom show <laughs> ten seconds later. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Y'all see the screen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. There you go. Yeah. I should have had Steve do the music, but there you go. Mike, that was nice music. Is that yours? No, it's just stock music. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's uh, up? Steve Swinburne's up. All right. Well, another thing that's happening in the forest right now is this. Um, I wrote a book called in good hands because we have a raptor rehabilitation center around here in vermont and i learned that a couple of loggers had cut down a tree and on top of that tree was a barred owl nest oh. so this young volunteer came from the vermont institute of natural science which is a raptor center where they take care of these hurt owls and hawks eagles and she picked it up and i realized wow there's a book here. So I want to share with you, if I could, the sound of this guy, because this is happening right now. See if you can do this with me. That's a barred owl. It's got very dark chocolate eyes. Those owls are calling now. 
and they're setting up territories or they have set up territories. So on the count of three, I'd like us all to do oh 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 ah. who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Are you ready, teachers, <laughs> students, everybody? One, two, three, go. Oh, 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 Hey, Steve, I'm so glad you said that because my wife and I, uh, in the evening, we can hear this. We, we heard that and we said, well, obviously it's an owl. Yeah. But we had no idea what kind of owl it was. It's a barn owl. It, yeah, it doesn't screech. Really it's at ooh, 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 ooh. and they and they make and they if you get a couple of barred owls going back and forth they make the strangest strangest uh conversation back and forth sneed you've heard this right? like this right yeah. i've never heard that but we have one here in missoula that we go to see in the winter time and um i wanted to tell you something about barred owls and see if you know anything about it so they are spreading west right they didn't used to be in the west and they've been spreading west and they seem to be displacing here um what are the famous owls that you know there were big lawsuits about and everything the, um, the what spotted Spot owls yeah right and so they seem to be displacing spotted owls uh the spotted owls can hold their own in a in an absolutely best situation but any marginal situation, the barred owls are moving in. We, oh. we still like to see them, of course, but it's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Interesting story. So, By the way, just, just real quickly, uh, Jerry, there's some comments. And, uh, I just saw that. Nancy Reedy says, my student's favorite book to write is ABC books. Well, that's good because I think everyone here has written an ABC book, I think. Yep, yep. Mike Shoulders has, I have, Sneed has, uh, Swinney. I don't know if Swinney wrote an alphabet book. I'm writing one today. <laughs> no. Jerry, but I'm showing how to draw things from letters of the alphabet. Woo! So, Ooh. Working on a new one. Yeah. Nice. You shouldn't give away your secrets like that, Mike. We'll all have one done by the I, end of the day. I don't think it's a radical new idea. You know? <laughs> Craig Schroeder. Craig Schroeder must have seen the cover of my book. He says, who would win, rabbit versus carrot? He must have thought my vegetable book was a who would win book, rabbit versus carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, Mary Alice, someone named Mary Alice calls this the author's frat house. <laughs> hmm, yeah. I can see that. Uh, hey, Jerry, read says, Craig's here's next Craig, Here's Craig Schroeder. He says, uh, and by the way, Craig, thanks for, uh, for uh, you know, staying with us. Gentlemen, how do you keep your mind thinking as a young person when you are writing your children's books? Well, I'm 67 years old, but I think I'm really seven. And Mike Cartel, I think, is 70. But he's I'm really. I'm 71. I'm 71. No. He's really nine years old. He's older than me. My <laughs> shoulders, I know, is, I think he's 11. I think he's really 11. <laughs> Mike has a curfew. Mike has a curfew. <laughs> well, I, as, no. as Jamie said, I don't think we've ever grown up. We, there, there's a part of us that that uh, keeps forever young, and I think that's really important when you're writing for children. Look who, yeah, asked me, uh, Look who we spend our time with. Uh, Craig, uh, uh, I, let me also tell Craig that uh, I'm a retired teacher and I taught 10 year olds. Uh, I, I, I spent 14 years in the classroom. So when I uh, put facts in my books, I look for things as does any author, uh, things that we think will grab the reader and want them to uh, turn the page and learn more. Uh, snakes flying through the sky will do that for most yeah people. right yeah <laughs> most readers especially guys too so people uh, ask me and i just say i pretend i'm eight years old they say why did you do falcon versus hawk i just say hey i thought eight-year-olds would love it yeah why did you write secretary bird versus rattlesnake oh i thought <clears throat> seven-year-olds would like it so you try yeah. to think like a seven-year-old eight-year-old you know i yeah. think you guys will have to tell me if this is true with you all like Sneed, you could tell me if this is true. 
I remember being seven and eight years old. Oh, like, yeah. I remember. definitely. And I, I think a key is just to be interested in everything. I think that's one thing oh, yeah. most authors share in common is we're just interested in almost everything, you know? Yeah. Nature, of course, grabs a lot of us, but so does history. I mean, and, you know, culture. And so that's what allows Mike to write those and Jerry to write great alphabet books is because you're interested in everything. Yeah, I think, I think that's yeah. super right. I think the we got to be curious. The best teachers I had are the ones that taught us to be curious. Yep. Lifelong learners. Lifelong yep. learners. That's the word I was looking for. You know, yep. so I, I, I had a theory about that, Snee. With, I think it's much better. I mean, I'm not an educator by, by, by training, but I think it's much better for kids to, uh, when they're younger to, to think and be educated uh, broadly, if, if shallowly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, so that, you know, they can have these little nodes to connect to. And then as they develop, you know, their, their thinking skills and, and their body of knowledge, they can go deeper. But first, it's much more important to go broad than deep. I, I agree. Think. I agree. Yeah, just be passionate about everything, you know. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think if you're curious about something and super passionate about something, that enthusiasm is going to translate into your writing. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. I don't think I, any of us really have to pretend we're eight years old. We're just kind of, that's our mindset, you know? We're eight years old. Yeah. yeah. I think the curiosity think, thing think, is the key, though. I think curiosity. I think the curiosity thing is the key word. Absolutely. Yeah. We're just fascinated and curious by things. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can I show everyone my dog? Oh, sure. Hey, Lola, come here. Come By the here. way, it's needs. It's needs. Uh, turn. Oh, you see, our, you see Lola here? Look over there. Look over there. Do you see the, all those funny boys? You should bark at them. Oh. <laughs> come here, boy. Come here. <laughs> yeah, so this is Lola. She was a uh, a rescue dog who would lived a couple years on her own before we got her. Oh, perfect. Perfect. And, um, <laughs> and so she was pretty difficult at first because she was afraid of everybody. Uh, and she would have like nipped at all of you guys. But now she's turned into just a wonderful dog. How many of you guys are dog people there? Yeah. I have two. Yeah. Yeah. And a cat. I don't cat. have a dog. <laughs> I, I, I like dogs a lot. We had a cat for a long, long time, but I love, I love the the kind of the dumb sweetness of a dog, you know? <laughs> Cats don't have owners, they have staff. You know yeah, what I mean? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, that was just an interlude, dog interlude there. Okay. Yeah. Your yeah. turn. Oh, my turn? Yeah. Ah, well, I wanted to show you something else here. So I mentioned, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize just how many different kinds of forests there are in the world. And uh, I mean, there's dozens and dozens of different kinds. And can you see the screen here? Yeah, it's great. Okay. Um, let's see, play from current side. So this is the tropical cloud forest that I mentioned earlier. This one happens to be in Costa Rica. And it is way up high in the mountains and it evolved because almost every day uh, was there's it's covered in clouds and so it's a very moist environment and a lot of different plants can live there including plants called epiphytes uh, that live up in the trees and uh, and so I got to climb up one of these things with a scientist one day and this is a whole mat of moss and other epiphytes about a hundred feet above the forest floor. And in oh, fact, wow. most of the kinds of plants living there live up in the trees. And the epiphytes, of course, provide this whole ecosystem for all kinds of other amazing plants. <laughs> and so I thought um, fig trees are especially important. This is a strangler fig tree. And they sprout in the tops of other trees and then send roots down and eventually choke off the other tree. Actually, they deprive it of light, so it dies. 
and then the name, it, right? it, it um it rots out the tree trunk rots out the old one leaving this hollow living tree um that's a strangler fig tree and that of wow. course becomes a home for many many different kinds of animals that live inside of it there wow wow cool. yeah so that yeah that's just my little thing Oh, but while I'm here, I should see if you guys can uh -huh. find some hidden animals. So um, I always like to show pictures with hidden animals in them and uh, see if anybody can find an animal in the forest floor picture here. Look. Is that a, a leaf insect? No, there's no leaf. Oh, insect. I see him. I see him. The colorblind guy sees him. What do you uh, see? I see a snake that I think is red. Is it red? I don't know the color, but uh, I would say at about 10 o'clock. Oh, I see the okay. snake, yeah. I'll show you this. So do you see my cursor? Can you see yeah. the cursor? Yes, yes. Okay. So here's the snake. It's uh, right here, what? spreading up like this way. Wow. What? Just kidding, that's a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were crazy. The snake's over here, right? Yeah, there you go. I see the snake, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so wow. I was I can't believe I missed that head. I can't believe Where's I missed that head. Where's the head? Here's the right head. There, I'll show you close up. All right. Okay. It's triangular. But I was hiking through the forest with a friend, and his shoe came untied. And so he bent down, and the snake <laughs> was about a foot from his, uh, from his foot, actually. Is that a, and, is that a viper? Uh, it's a, it, it's a, a snake called a canteel, and it's a close relative of the copperhead snakes oh, in the southeastern United States. Yeah. And so... Where's the photo from? Where's the I'm photo? sorry? Where did you, where's the picture from? Oh, so this is Costa Rica. This is... Oh, uh, Costa Rica. Lowland rainforest in the state of Guanacaste in Costa Rica. My and Lord. this is called a dry tropical forest that this guy is in here. Um, but what's very cool, and I never noticed this, this is why it's great to take pictures. When I saw it, I never noticed, whoops, what it was doing with its tail. Yeah. You know, it's holding its tail up like this. Is that yeah. a threat? Yeah, if you were a bird, what would you, or a rat, what would you think that looked like? Worm? Yeah, yeah. So wow. it's way cool. Oh, I was totally faked out. I had no idea that was its wow. tail. I, I'm wow. faked out. Yeah. I so am not going barefoot in Costa Rica. I just yeah, don't do it. that. <laughs> so if that guy, if that uh, snake had struck, uh, and and is that pretty venomous? Yes, it's highly venomous. You'd you'd live from it, but you would definitely need hospitalization. Right. Uh, Steve, Steve, a question. Yeah. Uh, just. Uh, below the snake in the bottom part of the picture, are those like grubs inside of a cocoon or something? Or? No, I think these are all just dead leaves at various stages of rotting. Okay, that one right there where your cursor is. That, oh, here? No, no, uh, like directly below the tail. Oh, here? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah. It looks like little, little um, maggots of some sort or something, you know? Yeah, or kind of a pod. Did you guys see the movie Alien? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah. And anyway. there's more of the snake right here. You can see his scales, I think. Uh, but uh, that could also be a dead leaf, come to think of it. So, yeah. yeah very cool. Okay, Mikey's shoulders is up. That was fabulous. That is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Along with uh, the state alphabet books, Sleeping Bear Press also did some state number books. Mm. So not all states have an accompanying number book to go with it. So this is Natural Numbers. Cool. And uh, this is not a fact. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to show you another fact. That's Arkansas. <laughs> His bones have only been found in Arkansas, that particular dinosaur. And so if you Google Arkansas, you'll see. So this book and this book here, they're both illustrated by Rick Anderson. He lives in uh, Clinton, Mississippi, and is a fabulous, fine artist. But in 1944, America had its last sighting of an ivory bill woodpecker. Uh. In right. 1944, 
the last sighting of an uh, ivory bill woodpecker on earth was 43 years later in Cuba, Cuba, wow. in 1987. Well, guess what happened in Arkansas? Some were found or spotted in 2004. Oh, nice. Wow. Did they photograph them? In eastern Arkansas. So the ivory bill woodpecker, this is the number three. Oh. Wow. There's, there's three of them in this picture. Oh, okay. So doing a number book is a little bit easier. Jerry, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. If, if, hey, if Mike. I mean, uh, Swinney. Yeah. Swinney, we're going to give you counting lessons later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. That's why, I, my, I, that's why my royalties are so low. I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, I got a question. So this sighting in Arkansas is, is still pretty controversial. Do you, after your research, do you believe they really saw one or did they just see a weird pileated woodpecker? No, no, no. I, I think they saw it. Uh-huh. I think I think they saw one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Uh, now mean, to know if they existed, right? I mean, if they if we really need if we they did still exist. You know, I haven't gone back since the book was written to follow up on that, because a lot of times that's important. Like if you're giving a talk to kids about something that's in your book. Someone told me, for instance, that a president, a certain president, wasn't at the World's Fair in Tennessee. Well, I know he was, and I got it from a newspaper clipping, and I spoke to other people that confirmed that he, that he was there. So there are people who will push back on facts that you know are true. Yeah. I don't know if any of you have ever had that. Last, last comment I want to make. Uh, yeah. Generally, uh, Sneed, I would yield to your expertise on this. Generally, the males are the more colorful of the species, correct? Yeah, yeah. In, in a few cases, they're the same color, but with woodpeckers especially, the males always have extra color on them, and the females almost never have that splash of red or yellow on them. Yeah. So, yeah. Sneed, Sneed knows about this because he wrote a book called... Oh, Woodpeckers! Oh, Drilling yeah. Holes and Bagging Bugs! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing that. And that's a, oh, for the kids, keep that holding up. That is the pileated. And so that's the controversy in Arkansas. Oh, I see did, it. did they see this I see that guy? Oh, I or did they see the uh, ivory bill? The ivory bill, oh. right. Yeah. yeah. You know, that makes me want to go back now and, and do some more research on the follow up on that. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm going to do one more round. Are you ready? One I more round. Know. Here we go. So I wrote a book of spices and flavors. And uh, the joke is, well, when I grew up, we ate everything. You know, most, a, a lot of people, they don't get to eat everything. But my, we have a joke in the Pilata family that we put everything on everything. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> All the flavors I had as a kid, I wondered where they came from. So here's some from the forest. You ready? Yeah. And uh, I probably won't show them all. I don't have a chance. But cinnamon comes from the bark of a tree. Cinnamon. Wow. Cola comes from the nut of a tree. Cola. Maple comes from the sap of a tree. Nutmeg comes from the nut of a tree. Is that right? Or a bush? Nutmeg. I, I think it's a tree. Maybe a Quinine, bush. Quinine, which cures malaria, comes from a tree, the bark of a tree. <laughs> Vanilla comes from the seed pod of a tree, vanilla. And uh, chocolate comes from the seed pod. Chocolate's really strange because it grow the pod grows out of the trunk of the tree. I don't know if I have that here. Uh, oh yeah, I have, you'll have to guess this, you guys. Uh, why is chocolate on the X page? Chocolate is on the X page. Oh. It's extra, extra good. good. Extra good. <laughs> no, the uh, Aztecs called it Zocotl. X O X O C O A T L. Zocotl. Cool. 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 I, I believe the Aztecs are the yeah the Aztecs. And then I think uh, coffee comes from a bush, so that's on a tree, right? Right. And uh, tea, I believe, comes from a tree. So there you, you go. go. There's my fact. Hey. Hey, this group is so educational. Do you think we can get college credit for doing this? 
<laughs> just write a paper. Yeah. yeah. Show okay. up university. <laughs> Show up we'll university. We will peer review. We'll peer review. We'll be the peer review. You go ahead okay. and write it. <laughs> okay, Artel, go. All right. Get your pencil and paper. We're going to draw. Okay. Okay. Can you see the white screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, back that off here. Okay. Here we go. So we're going to start. We're going to draw a bear. Cool. Make a little triangle nose. Okay. And then we're going to make a curvy line go this way and a curvy line go this way. Watch. Like that. And like that. Oh. Okay. In fact, you can come up a little more. Now, uh, bears have a snout. Actually, bear heads, if you look at bear from the side, especially, looks a lot like a dog. But we're not going to put the snout. We're just going to keep this like a friendly little cartoon bear. Do like that. And then there. Now, we're going to make a big curvy line. It starts here on the side of the head, goes all the way around. It's going to be the head. Okay, so watch. His head's kind of lumpy, sorry about that. Okay. And then little round bear ears. Looks like a puppy dog now. It does, yeah. Bears, uh, they look a lot like dogs, uh, the head does, okay? Now, start here on the side and we make a bump and then we make a big bump like that. So we have a little curve, another curve, okay? And now we have that big back leg, it's a curve and then the foot, come around and do this. Now that doesn't touch there, it's on the ground, okay? And then when you make the front legs, you have to make them uh, thick because they're big heavy legs, okay? So don't put it close together like this, put it far, farther apart and then curve it down. And then in between here, we got his little tummy, his little belly. Okay, and then right here on the side of the head, we're gonna make a, cur a bump and then another bump and then a straight line. Watch, bump, another bump, and then a straight line and make this other foot a little shorter because it's a little further away from us. And when things are farther away from us, they look a little shorter. And then put some little paws here. And then you can put some, some ground. I'm gonna show you a little trick for putting our bear in the forest. Watch. When you draw grass, if you're gonna have any grassy areas like a little savanna or something like that, or just an open area, a lot of people draw grass starting at the top and coming down. Don't do that. Watch, start at the ground and go up. Oh. That's how grass grows. Grass grows like that. Okay. You wanna put a bird feeder in there? You could. <laughs> I'm going to draw a snake flying down. And then when you do bushes, you just do the tops of clouds. Just draw the tops of clouds. That's so cool. And there's your bear. Okay. Got it? Wow. Nice. That's way cool. Okay, awesome. guys. Oh, man. Hi. Let's let's see nice. everyone else's. Share. Yeah. Okay. Pretty bad. Oh, you want to see mine? Yeah, my here's mine. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's, that's good, uh, Steve. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's that's nice. Mine. Oh, nice oh, that was too much fun. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, let's see. Um, Lynette Richaud says, "Yes, I agree. She should get credit." Good. Yeah. Susan Hopkins <laughs> from Colorado <laughs> says. I love learning new facts and information I can pass on to my students. Hey, Susan, thanks for watching again. And then Nancy Reedy says, one of my students, Luke, loves Mike Artell and his jokes. There you oh. go, Mike. You're the favorite today. <laughs> Luke, you're my favorite. <laughs> Mike Shoulders and I will just go back in our doghouse. You know, Mike's the favorite. Uh, Trinity Christian Academy. <laughs> Trinity Christian and in Missouri. Hey, Ma hey, Luke, thanks for watching our show. You're a really cool kid. 
And Nancy Reedy says, the flying snakes have interested the fifth grade boys to want to learn more about Costa Rica. So uh -huh. good going. Good nice, going. nice. Uh, just a correction, though, the, the flying snakes were in Southeast Asia, not Costa Rica. So uh, if they look, um, they won't find them there. But um, there are cool snakes in both places. So, Yeah. Um, let's see. Where's my list? Swinney's next, I believe. All right. I'll do this real quick. Um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about where you get ideas for books. And... Um, so I'm going to share my screen once again. And I, when I saw this post, I thought I've got to do a book about this. So check this out. Here we go. Let's see if I can pull this off. Can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 All right. Here we go. Whoa. 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 Is that a ski area? That's Breckenridge. And that's a moose. Man. And that's a moose You're going down a snow slope, a ski slope. <laughs> and when I saw that, because I'd written this book and I talked about moose in Vermont. We have a lot of moose in Vermont. Wow. So I got the idea rather than doing a nonfiction book about moose, again, what I want to do is do a, a book about a moose <laughs> that wants to learn how to snowboard. So <laughs> that's what I'm working on right now, a moose that learns snowboarding. <laughs> hey, Steve, can he stop or is he just tumbling down the mountain? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess he did stop at some point. I'm going to turn that off for a second. Hold on. That looked like a skier was filming while he was skiing. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was a snowboarder or a skier going down the hill. How cool was that? So it's interesting where you get ideas. You see something. And all of a sudden, it, it can click in and be something funny, or you got an idea. So I've got this idea that I want to have a, a a moose just watching all these skiers and snowboarders going down a hill and thinking, I, I could do that. that. <laughs> so he gets his, he gets his friend the beaver to chisel down a tree to make snowboards. That's where I am right now. <laughs> hey, Steve, as a musician, you know that guitar players do that. Anytime a guitar player is watching a band, the guitar player is standing in front of the lead guitar player going, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's, okay. my, that's, my, that's my idea. Sneed, you're up. Okay, so um, if I go Sneed, then Mike Shoulders, then uh, Swinney's going to sing a song with his banjo. Nice, nice. Oh, uh, Lele. Nice. So I just want to shift, shift gears a little bit and tell everyone, you know, um, speaking of writing ideas, I know for all of us, birds have been an inspiration at some point. And uh, this time of year is the best time of year to get into birding. There we go. There's Jerry's book right there, the bird alphabet book. And I wanted to tell everyone that there's this great tool to help you get into it. And it's called eBird. And eBird, uh, it's an app on a phone. And you can go in and record uh, all of your bird experiences. And it's really a lot of fun. It's like a video game, but better because you're recording real things that you see. And so here's my life list here. You can see I've seen 895 species. Wow. This year I've wow. seen 177. And also um, in the Western Hemisphere, which is, you know, North America, I got my hundredth, my hundredth year bird today. And um, I'll show you what it is. I was wondering what my hundredth bird was going to be this year. Now I took Lola for a walk. I came home and I caught a white crowned sparrow, um, which is what this looks like. That's what yeah. we have yeah. them at the Peters in Vermont. Yeah, yeah, and these can be found all over the country, yeah. and, but I, they weren't even on my radar for my 100th bird, but I wanted to encourage all you listeners out there to get a pair of binoculars, sign up for eBird, and dive in. It's, it's really a lot of fun, especially during lockdown right now. Neat. That is really neat, Steve. That is terrific. I never knew about eBird. Yeah. That is really terrific. I used to love his film critique critiques right roger ebert oh yes that same guy yeah he started it <laughs> okay mike shoulders go 
My forest fact is I'm giving away a Titanic book. So, so last week I said that if you left a comment on the video, uh, that I would put your name in a drawing. And I also went back and I included everybody who commented live. So here is the list of people. Uh, I'm not gonna, I can spin it around. Let me just move it a little bit. So hopefully you'll see your name if you were watching last week or made a comment. So yeah. this is called uh, Decision Roulette. So I'm gonna turn the sound on, turn it up as loud as it will go. And here we go. This person wins a free autographed copy of T is for Titanic. Good luck, all of you. Yeah. It's coming. It, ooh, who is it? Oh. 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 <laughs> Susan Hutchins, what? Woo. Woo. <laughs> so Susan will be getting an autographed copy of this in the mail, or if she wants to send me someone else's name, I'll mail it to them and it will be autographed. That's my interesting forest fact of the day. <laughs> what a cool thing. Well done. Great. Hey, great show, guys. Thank you, Steve Swinburne, for coming on. Thank you. Mike Artell for coming on. Thank you, Sneed Collard. Our, our secret weapon today was Steve Sneed Collard. Good thank job. You, thank and you, Thank you, everybody. girls in the background. Uh, Mary out, Alice Cummings and Take Jamie out, Connelly. Steve. And here we go. Here we go. Here's Let's finish off the show with Bye Bye Kids, Don't Forget to Read. And I'm playing it on my banjo lele, which is a banjo and ukulele mixed together. Bye-bye, kids. I hope you had a good show. Bye-bye.